Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Harncook, Ion Tyres, specially designed for electric vehicles, PowerShop, for day or night EV charging plans, and CarLoop, data to empower Australia's EV revolution. Hey everyone, I'm Tom, this is Joy. Hello. And today we're gonna to go through a very, very good week, basically, with our 40 kilowatt hour SIG energy battery using uh, Amber. Well, Amber this Electric. is meant to be our monthly summary, I think, but. Yeah, we've had a particularly good week yeah. as on top of that. Very good week. Mm. If you want to uh, go through our like monthly bills, you can. I'll leave a link in the uh, video description below as well. Uh, and if you want to also get some advice on what battery to install, also check out our collaboration with Solar Choice. Link in the video description too. If you want to sign up with Amber, there's also a link in the video description as well with our referral code. Uh, everyone gets a little bonus as well. But uh, before we start on the very good week that we've had, let's go through our system because we do get a lot of questions about our system with each video. So we thought we'd just lay it out for you so that way you don't have to ask. I mean, if you've got any other questions, of course, please feel free to, but this is our system, okay? So our household has two EVs at any one time that we do charge regularly. We have 8.4 kilowatts of rooftop solar, which is AC coupled. It's an existing solar prior to the battery installation. We've not upgraded the solar at all. Uh, this is a 40 kilowatt hour SIG energy LFP battery. It has five eight kilowatt uh, modules um, and also an inverter up the top, which is three phase. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we're leaving a sixth module um, for a potential future DC fast charger, which is bi-directional. Waiting for the price to come down and also waiting for that to be compatible with Amber. So stay tuned for that. That's hopefully coming. That's why we left that sixth uh, slot free. Each of these battery slots is eight kilowatt hour. So each like segment, each. Yeah, it's a rectangular block. Yeah. Um, and each segment has a 4.8 kilowatt uh, throughput. So 4.8 kilowatt import and export at any one time. So therefore 4.8 times five, the overall throughput for this system is 24 kilowatts. Hence why we went for a 25 kilowatt three phase inverter to take advantage of the throughput. So throughput being like the fastest it can go in or out. Yep, correct. Um, we've got a three-phase home, like we said, three-phase setup, um, and we know there's been a recall with SIG Energy recently with the single-phase systems. I think there was some um, heat issues with the wiring for single-phase systems. Uh, that does not extend to three-phase systems just yet, so we have not had to uh, have a recall on our battery. Mm -hmm. But if you guys have a SIG Energy battery at home and you are not sure um, if you're affected, I think if you were affected, you probably would have already been contacted. But you know, if you want peace of mind, just contact your installer and they'll be able to help you out. Yeah, worth asking the question for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so each phase in Ausgrid, which is our distribution network, allows 10 kilowatts of export at any one time. So three phase system, 10 kilowatts per phase, 30 kilowatt export. Hence why we went for the bigger inverter to export as much as we can, obviously. Um, this system was installed at a discounted rate thanks to our friends from Infinite Solar in the northern beaches of Sydney, also via Solar Choice. Again, link in the video description below for our uh, collaboration. We took advantage of the federal government's rebate, which extends up to 50 kilowatt hour battery size. Uh, but we went to 40, like I said, leaving that last slot for a future DC bi-directional charger. Yeah, so I mean, we could have saved more um, in terms of the government rebate, but we would have also had to spend a lot more. So. Mm -hmm. We figured like an extra DC charger one day, we can use a car's battery, for example, which is 60 kilowatt hour extra for, say, for a Tesla Model Y, 80 kilowatt hours for an Xpeng G6 that we've got at the moment. And would that be on top of this 25 inverter? It, right? uh, it would actually, I think it'd be in between. I think the inverter goes there. No, no, I meant as in, in terms of how much oh, you can physically. give back to the grid. Yes. Um, no, oh, no. no. So it would this just be is... 25 to 30 then? Uh, it's, yeah, basically. Well, it's capped at 25. 25 kilowatt is the max we can give back to the grid. Okay, oh sorry, the, the, the 30 is actually from the Osgrid side of things. Yes. So even if you were to put a DC inverter, mm -hmm. the maximum you could pull from any car would be an additional five on top of what we've already got? No, it's still 25. So it's a 25 kilowatt inverter. But if this is already pouring out 20. Yeah, okay, so you can't do any more, right? Yeah. So that's not really that much better, is it? And I think that's probably why we didn't do well, it. Yes and no. If, this, if you've run out of charge on this one, you can use the car. See what I mean? Yeah, but that's not the rate. I'm talking about the rate, the, not the yeah, total rate. Yeah, so amount. you're limited by the 25 kilowatt yeah, inverter. Okay. That's what I want. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. You can go yeah. to 30, but then you're, the limit is then the, the grid export at 30 yeah, kilowatts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But as in what I'm saying is that if you were to add that DC... Um, Directional charger. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it still has to run through this straw. Um, this is the still the rate limiting straw. 
So, yes, if you want to power your home, yes, yes, correct. Um, like, say there's a price spike, what's yes. the maximum you can give if you had a DC? It's still 25, you're still yeah, limited so by the inverter. Yeah. yeah. So at the moment, we're limited to 24. Four. Yes. So it's actually really only one more. But then you're limited by how much battery capacity battery, you've yes, got, right? Like so you storage. drain this 40, oh, you can add an extra... I'm just saying whether you get more car. rate, but you don't, rate, you don't yeah. get more rate. Like, I was yeah. thinking, like, if there's another whole thing sitting on top yeah. of there, like, do you get more rate? But you don't get more rate. The rate is set by this... Yes, the rate is set. This little green, green yeah. buddy here. Yep. But say you want to power your home with, um, for your aircon or heating in winter or summer, if you've run out of charge, you can use some from the car as well. That's yeah, the benefit yeah, yeah, of the yeah. charger. That's yeah. like... I know, extra storage, yeah, extra but not, storage. not, not the rate. That's not, correct. So you are limited either by this or by the export from the uh, grid side. Yep, correct. Cool. cool. Sorry okay. for that long time. No, no, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that's important to get uh, that sorted out because it is a tricky concept, rate and storage. So the two are like related, but um, it's important to know the difference as well. So because some people install a big battery, but a small inverter. So that is not as good as like, a bigger inverter where you can throw more back to the grid or throw more to the house. It depends though. I mean, if, if you have a small inverter, maybe you just want to go off grid. Maybe you just want to be self-sufficient. Mm. So that's fine for your yeah. purposes. Depends what you need. We want to chuck as much as we can to the grid. So that's, we want to make money. We want to make money. Speaking <laughs> of, today's video is about making money. Um, okay, so we had a Power Wall 2 here previously, which was gifted to Joy's parents who live very close to us. So they are now enjoying the Power Wall 2. Uh, we do not have gas. This is a gas-free home. Uh, we even have an induction cooktop. We have an induction heater. Induction heater. We have an electric heater and reverse cycle aircon. No gas at all yeah, in this induction house. Induction cooking. Did you, I did. What did I say? Induction cooktop. I can't cooktop. Exactly. Yeah. I spaced Look, out and wasn't listening to you. There's still a physical <laughs> gas outlet, but we don't have gas. It's, we just don't pay for gas. And we've got a heat, hot water heat pump system, which we've had since 2013. Working really well. Sandin, Japanese brand, 12 years old now, going strong. Okay, so let's talk about Amber now. So we have Amber on Smart Shift Automation on Earnings Optimizer, which means that we... Um, the, the AI takes care of us and tries to make us as much money as we can. We may not always um, reserve, you know, battery for the home, but we do make, uh, like, it does throw back energy back from the battery to the grid when the price is high. Um, that's important. And then it might charge, like, it's a relative difference, right? So it makes a lot of money, but to charge the battery might take money as well. But overall, we usually come on top in terms of how much money we earn and it does reduce our power bills. Yeah, so well. I mean, if, if your main concern is wanting to be completely self-sufficient, then you wouldn't want to have it on this setting. But for us, we don't mind draining the battery when we can sell it at a higher price. Mm. And then, yes, when we need to power our home like overnight and our battery is drained, it's pulling it much cheaper. Yep. Um, you know, we're talking like maybe 10 cents or 20 cents. Um, and so, yes, I know that's not always like the maximum kind of renewable, but at this point, it's just like, yeah, we're here to, yeah. we're here to make the most, well, save, save the most money that we can. Yeah, or reduce the power bills, right? So that's, yeah. it's a relative difference, what we're trying to do. Yeah, but you don't have to, that's the thing. You so if to. your main priority is trying to maximise your, you know, use of renewable energy. Or batteries, yes. Um, then yes, there's a, you can do that, and then there's a different setting um, yeah. with Amber. It's called battery booster. So if you don't have, you don't want to throw it back to the grid, just have it on battery booster. Mm -hmm. Just use the stored battery in your home, for your home. So that's the difference. Yeah. We have uh, automated solar curtailment on off because of our, like I said, we've got a, an older um, AC coupled solar system. So it cannot talk to the battery's inverter. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you've got a newer DC coupled system like Joy's parents, where there's too much solar being produced uh, and sometimes Amber's in negative territory, so like say minus three, minus four cents to export, then you want to cut your solar off, right? So that's where it's useful. And it's not fair to say Amber's in negative territory. The wholesale price is in negative territory. Yeah, just Amber's, Amber's wholesale price. Yeah. Cost Whereas for us, we don't have, uh, we don't, the solar doesn't talk to the batteries, so we just have it off that way. It doesn't factor into Amber's equation as such. Okay. Hope that makes sense. And uh, we have it on 5% reserve level for the battery. So it drains all the way down to 5%. Okay. So we try to use as much as we can. And the last thing I want to tell you guys before we make, show you how much money we've made, I'll just show you the, um, the SIG Energy app. So currently it's you know, pulling from solar and from, actually not the grid, just from solar to top up the battery um, before the sun goes down. It's on 89% at the moment. 
And some people do ask us, um, so how many times does your battery cycle? Like, does that affect the battery's longevity if you're cycling the battery so much as a VPP? Let me show you something. So this is a critical um, metric here that I want to show you. So for the month of November, and in fact, also, even for the month of October, I'll just go back one month there. So for the month of October, you can see the two battery um, graphs there. So one megawatt hour for the month of October uh, export uh, from the battery and then one megawatt hour uh, imp import or input to the battery for the whole month of October. Okay, so if you put a thousand kilowatt hours, which is one megawatt hour, divided by 30 days, that is not 40 kilowatt hours. That's less than 40. And the size of this battery is 40. So by deduction, the, the battery has not cycled more than once per day on average. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not good with numbers, but, yeah. <laughs> but um, when the way I look at it is that if you look at the price cycle, and I'm a visual person, so the price cycle does this once a day. So it follows the price mm. cycle. So it's only going to do that pretty much once a day. There might be the occasion where it does it twice a day, um, but generally it, you only see... See, where's the pretty picture that I yeah, like? Yeah, I'll show you that one. That's a good You've one. You've got to scroll down, I think, isn't it? Yes. Um... So, there we go. Yep. Yeah. So, so there we go. that's that's how I understand things. It only looks like like it looks like this every day. There's only one. Yeah. Generally speaking. One hump yeah. every day. One hump, one down. One up, yep. one down. So, but what I'm trying to tell you is that I wish there was a way to show you how much uh, battery is discharged on average per day. I, I don't think the app has that yet, but yeah, just. You can look at the graphs here, one up, one down. Well, I mean, that's the state of charge. So yeah. obviously, if it only goes up once and down once, that's one cycle. Yeah. So. But also less than 40 kilowatt hours per day on average for the month of October. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it as well. So there you go. Two ways to confirm that it doesn't cycle more than once per day. OK, so that is um, some of the background to the battery. And now for the money we've made. I know you've been <laughs> waiting for this. OK, so let's have a look at the uh, last, say, last eight days in, in November. And that's where we've made the most gains. So. You can see in the top right corner, last 30 days, we're now in $308 credit. For the month. For the month. La well, last 30 last days. Last 30 days, 28 days. So that's pretty good. That's the most I've ever seen this app, actually. Um, so so yesterday was $6, $6 for Thursday. You're actually, that's not fair. You should look at usage okay, costs, fine. isn't it? I'll go back here, this just to be fair. Yeah, this so is net. net gain, $1.83. Thursday was $2.99. And then Wednesday, $147.27. That's the most I've ever seen. In a day. I've never seen it make that much money in a day. And to be fair, look, solar was 147.21, which is the export, and usage was six cents. So we only used six cents worth of electricity for a net gain of $147.27. Let's scroll down to the bottom here of this graph. So you can see there were two major events uh, during that day. So at around, let's pick up this phone here because I can't see, at around um, 11 o'clock, for about 20 minutes, the price was about $21 per kilowatt hour. And I've got evidence of this because if I go to my photos, I took a screenshot of this. You can see on this screenshot now, uh, between 11.55 and 12.10, there were four five minute blocks where it was $21.30. And that, that price is guaranteed for five minutes. So the battery knows that's when it's time to sell, right? To export at 24 kilowatts, basically, because of the big inverter, right? Yep. So that's when we made the most gains. Um, and then, if you look at the second green peak there, uh, there was about, I think, a 10 minute period where it was minus, uh, a minus to use the energy, yep. use the grid, yep. right? So we made the, a bit of money then as well. So not only did we sell it for a ridiculously high price, but then I guess the kind of like, the grid itself kind of overcorrected for a while. And so for, like, for there was like a 10 minute block? Uh, it was more than that, actually. I've got it here. It's a um, 20-minute block once a, again. Yeah, a 20-minute block where we were actually being paid to take the electricity back, which is kind of hilarious if you think about it. Because yeah. I think it used to... Well, it, there it, was just too much Too much, system. yeah. Yep. Too much for people like so us. So they were actually kind of, yeah, paying people if it's, if, like, if, hey, if you, if it's, it's possible, much. you know, if, if, for, for the people who can do it to take it back, mm. they were paying people to take it back. Charge your EVs, charge your battery, whatever. Yep. Yeah. So, like, for example, here for 20 minutes in this half an hour block, it was a dollar and six cents. So, again, the battery charged up because it was drained from the last spike. Um, it was actually charging and getting paid a dollar to, to charge the yep. battery. So this is one of those situations where you will get a little like double peak. I don't know whether you can show that. Oh on yeah. The uh, what day was that? Um, that was twenty sixth of November. Okay, so there's the twenty sixth of November. So there you go. Mm -hmm. There's actually three peaks there. Well, as in yes. So that first little, um, well the. The first bit is it's just it's like a normal day, mm. isn't it? And then the bit where it goes down 
is actually obviously where the that massive spike. spike was. Yes. And then it just sort of more or less does its normal thing again. Yep. So you can see even with this, it wasn't like all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down again. It was kind of just like up, blip, up, yep. down again. So. And it doesn't always correlate, like the price you get or the amount you get for that period doesn't always correlate to how much you throw back to the grid. Right, so you know there were other days where we threw back more to the grid. Well, this wasn't a good example because we still earned sixty-two dollars that day, net sixty-two. But there were other days where you throw back just as much, but you earn like two dollars, right? Yeah. So, so let me compare that. So, uh, this day here, we or even Friday yesterday, yeah. we probably threw back just more. as much. In fact, more. Yeah, more than that one hundred forty-seven dollar day. Oh, actually, sorry, no, no, it isn't more. Yeah, yeah. but look, look at the yellow. Like it's fairly comparable, right? Yeah. Um, but it, we earn much less. So yeah. it is to do with the price spike is everything. Yeah, yeah. In fact, look at this day here, Saturday 22nd, sorry. This one here, Friday 21st. We still made $18 that day, net. Yeah. But we only threw back 2.8 kilowatt hours. Yeah, we, uh, as you can see, we hardly gave any solar to the grid. And yeah. yet um, we were paid quite handsomely for just that tiny amount. Because the issue is that you're actually giving it to the grid when it needs it. So you know, don't feel bad making money. You're, you're actually helping stabilize the grid. Mm. Yep. The grid needs it. Yep. We're yeah. helping the country. Think about yeah, that. Yeah. Do your part feel for the nation. Feel good about it. Feel good about it and <laughs> make money from it. Um, and then the previous day, even then, like 11 kilowatt hours is still not much, but we still made 18 bucks that day. So this is a good time of year. Um, $308 in credit um, just from yeah. throwing it back at the right time. Yeah. And all thanks to the AI from yes. Amber. But we know, you know, um, this was like two days in a month. And not every day is going to look like 100, minus $160. And we went through a couple of months in winter where, yeah, it, like there was like nothing, nothing, nothing to, mm. nothing to write home about, so to speak. Look at the bills that we um, have on the spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. It depends, yeah. Mm. Can we discuss as to why spikes happen? This is the critical thing, right? Can we speculate at all? I, I don't want to speculate. You don't want to speculate? No. 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 Okay, fair no. enough. Because... Um, yeah, I don't know enough about it and I don't know enough about um, A, where all the sources of energy are coming from and B, what, what are the main users of energy in New South Wales. So I'm not going to speculate. It is complicated, isn't it? There's a lot going on at the moment. Yeah, yep. yep. like I've, I don't know like residential versus commercial versus industrial, like what is using all the electricity. But what I do know is that the grid is volatile at this time of the year. So when it's volatile, this is when it's time to take advantage of situations like this. Yep. Alrighty, any final thoughts? Mm, I mean, I kind of feel like as we're going into summer that we will get more price spikes. But mm. I just feel like, yeah, I feel like that it's like in a mix of like the high temperatures and the- um, Humidity? Yeah. Maybe. And the Bureau of Meteorology just officially declared La Nina. So, <laughs> you know, that means that we're probably going to have more rainy days mm. overall. Yeah. Yeah, more volatile days. I would say Australia will need more power as time goes on, not less. Mm. Yep. And we need more storage as more renewables enter the grid. So this is where yep. we should and, do our part. And more people drive electric vehicles. <laughs> That's right. The world is changing. So take advantage of it. That's all I can say to you. All right, uh, that's it from Join Myself. If you're able to. If but you're I able think to. That, that's the other benefit, though, is that for those who are able to, um, it is still making it cheaper for everybody if we kind of flatten, you mm. know, flatten the, um, the grid for everybody else so that there isn't that volatility. So mm. eventually you'll be paying a lower price overall. And that's fine. That's the aim. That's a good it? thing, right? One day we will pay a low, low price for electricity. Yeah. Once yeah. we get this like, right. We were, we were recently in China and we found out that over there, um, most of their electricity is like from renewable sources and they've got lots of batteries and they basically pay about, you know, seven US cents. So that's about 10, 10, oh. 11 cents all the time for electricity. Oh. That's just their normal standard price for electricity. Can be done, can be done. Yep. Hopefully that'll be us soon. Well, in the future sometime. Mm. Alrighty, well that's it from Join Myself and Ludicrous Fee. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, it's happy charging. <laughs>